this is part two of the animation series and in this video we are going to create this shape over here using the rays so let's do it now here we have five points and we are going to define it inside our editor now uh, back in the school while doing geometry we used to define points like this but if i would like to define my points inside our editor then there are a lot of different ways we can do it but we are going to use just one method right now and which is called tuples so let's say if i want to define this point inside my editor what i can do i can just put an equal sign after p0 and before this round breaks so i can just put my equal sign just right here let's do it inside our editor E0 equals 0, 0. So now I have defined my first point over here. And let's just define all of these points like this. So now I have defined all of these points inside my editor as tuples. Now uh, I'm going to create a list using these points. So let's say if I ask you to draw this shape without lifting your pen then some of you might start from the point p0 or some of you might start from the point p1 or any other point and every time you pick a point you have multiple options to pick the next point let's say if you pick the point p0 then the next point you could pick could be either p1 p2 p3 or p4 so what I'm saying that here you have multiple options and there will be a lot of different kind of variations how you can draw this shape. So let's say if I want to draw this shape, then I have to decide the path I'm going to pick. So this path, we are going to create a list of this path here inside our editor. Let's see how we can do it. So I can say path equals, and I will use square brackets. Now, imagine you have a pen in your hand and you are going to draw this shape. So let's say if I pick the first point is P1, then what I would do, I would just write P1 over here and I would put a comma. Now let's say I move, I pick the next point as P2. Then I will write P2 and then P3, again P4, and then back to the P1. Okay. Now from P1, I can go to P3. Okay. Now in order to uh, move to the next point uh, either I can either pick P2 or I can pick P4 but here you will see we have to overlap the lines so let's do it for now let's pick P4 and then I will pick P2 okay so that's it now we have created a path over here now we have to separate the x and y coordinates from this path because our plot function it needs to take the x and y coordinates separately now in order to separate the x and y coordinates we can use the method called unzip so let's see how we can do it first of all here you see these all points it has x and y coordinates so what we are going to do we are going to create Two different lists one list is for x coordinates which will store all of these values and we will create another list for y coordinates and which will store all of these values okay so let's see how we can do it first we are going to define two variables x for storing x coordinates and y for storing all y coordinates equals zip and path okay now the thing is it will zip the path 
now uh, don't worry about what is zip right now uh, for now we want to unzip the path okay so what i can do i can just put star sign over here and by doing so i can now separate all of these x coordinates and store all of this value in my x variable and store all of these y values in my y variable so now i can use this x and y inside my plot function to create this shape let's see so now we can directly use our x and y coordinates inside our plot function let's do it x and y now last time we used one additional argument marker equals point this time we, we don't need to provide that argument because we this time we are going to create a line and by default float will create a line for us without any additional arguments so we are ready to go let's just save the code and run so now we got our figure and we also got the shape but as you can see it's kind of stretched out so by default net.lib is trying to fill as much area as possible and by doing so it will stretch whatever you you are trying to plot inside the plotting area so you can fix this by writing an additional line of code just before plt dot show and here you can write just plt dot get current axis dot set aspect equal this will maintain the aspect ratio of our content and now let's close the figure save the code and run it so now we have a perfect square with diagonal lines and that's it for this video and one thing i know the pace of this series is a bit slower but this is the most i can do right now because i have a really busy schedule other than youtube so i hope you guys understand that in the next video we are going to do some alternations to this shape and we will see how we can use breakpoints so that's it for now thank you